Well, 2023 was something. Some of you thrived in 2023. Others of you were kind of like this. <laughs> Whatever the case, please know that 2024 will be your year. And you're gonna look back at 2023 and you're either gonna laugh, possibly cry, depending on how 2023 went for you. But there's one thing that you must always remember. Time doesn't stop. It keeps on turning and the reality of yesterday becomes a fond, nostalgia-filled memory. And every year, my friends in the board gaming sphere that just happen to be content creators do the same thing as they look back at all the games that they played and that they loved in 2023. And I wanted to be just like them, but I know what you're gonna say. I'm well aware. Oh, Drew, we're halfway through February. Okay, shut up. I'm not gonna take any of that because that doesn't affect me. You know why? I still have my holiday decorations up. So you cannot hurt me. You do not know the bounds of my procrastination. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to the list. I'm Drew the Cardboard Cowboy. This is Welcome to Boredom. And these are the top five games that I played in 2023. Before we begin, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel and it really encourages me to do more lists like this. Especially if I want to do it on a more consistent basis. Go ahead, click that button. Please do it. As well, I'm gonna clarify some things very quickly. These games must have a board and or a small player count in order to fit into this category. As well, they must have been published or successfully crowdfunded in 2023. And the final thing that I wanna let you know, these games are games that I actually played. So no wool over your eyes here, Scout's Honor. So let's get started. Number five, Apothecary. A game about plague doctors fulfilling orders and ruining the reputations of those other doctors that are in town? Count me in. Apothecary is a two to four player game where you're preparing for the plague coming towards you in your town. Throughout the game, you will be collecting ingredients. You will fulfill the orders of the townsfolk in order to gain more points. There's an event mechanic within the game where after someone's turn or every round, something happens that affects the entire game or one specific player or medical component. And I, Love it, because it is simply a countdown to Doomsday. This is a new game that was designed by one of my close friends, Nicholas Sparkman. He teamed up with One First Games to get this game published. They were successfully funded on GameFound in November, and I look forward to getting a copy. Number four, Sky Team. This game, this game was one of the best and most frustrating games that I've played all year long. It's a two-player game where you and your co-pilot are attempting to land a plane. Simple enough, you might be thinking, but unfortunately you and your fellow player have hidden information because you cannot share every single piece of info in the game to your teammate. That is what makes it frustrating. If only you could read minds. I promise you, this game is not too complicated. It is fun, it's quick, rolling dice, choosing from your options, and doing your best in order to work together to get the plane landed. Overall, I think it's a great game. Number three, Ready, Set, Bet. Horses and gambling. The atmosphere whenever I played this at Dice Tower West was absolutely maddening. Here I am in Las Vegas, Nevada, playing a game about betting horses at the Kentucky Derby. I had a phenomenal teacher teach me how to play this game. They treated it like we were actually at the Kentucky Derby. And to simply say, it absolutely yeed my haul. This game is where one person is in charge of rolling the dice, and the others are going to sit there placing bets throughout the game. The dice roller is going to continue. As they're rolling the dice, the little pieces of the horses are going to be moving across the track. As they're moving, you get to decide quickly on who you want to bet on. And there are several horses or circumstances that you can place bets on. The player with the most coins collected at the end of the game is the winner. Simple, fun, and a great dice roller is a crucial part of it. Just like having a good DM in D&D, this makes the game incredibly fun. Number two, Conquest Princess. Fashion is power. This is an important thing that you have to remember about this game. Fashion and sci-fi collaborate together to make this game amazing. I cannot describe the amount of fun that I had playing this game. I had a great team of people that worked together with me, and we were actually able to win in our demo. You're battling the fashion tyrant who is trying to take over the galaxy and ruin fashion for everyone. You and the other players are battling against the fashion tyrant in your spaceship the Temporal Intergalactic Armed Response Agency, or Tiara for short. This is a cooperative bag building game 
where there is never a single lull in the game. The best way that I can describe it is that this is a mix of Star Trek and it combined with Sailor Moon, with just a dash of Doctor Who sprinkled into it. It's chaotic, it's wild, and at the same time, it's completely organized. And it's even got fucking space invaders. This game was beautiful. Seppi, who is one of the leads at Fight in a Box, is by far one of the best teachers that I've ever had in a gaming atmosphere. We never had a dull moment in our gameplay. He was absolutely engaging, and he made my first experience playing Conquest Princess to be absolutely fantastic. So, shout out to Seppi. And number one is Kelp. I praise this game so much all over the place. You can find me on podcasts, you can find me on a lot of different areas where I just praise this game so much. Even when I didn't get the chance to play it. I didn't get to play it until I went to Essen in October. And before Essen, I saw them at two different shows. But this game is it. This was the best game that I played all year. Kelp is a two player game where each player plays with two different mechanics. It's a simple game really. The octopus versus the shark. Will the octopus get away or will the shark capture its prey? I got the chance to actually play with the designer who absolutely decimated me. But in the short time that I played, I knew this game was something special. Somehow this game mixed social deduction, deck building, and resource slash bag collecting into one game and it's just maddening to me. The pieces are beautiful. I got to play as the octopus. Like, here's one of the pieces that I grabbed from my manufacturer because they're manufacturing with my company, What's Games. Their shark piece is phenomenal. Although their demo had a Lego shark, which I also thought was brilliant, but that's because I'm a child, so sue me. This game was my number one game of the year. Just an excellent two-player game that I would recommend to anyone. And that's my list, what do you think? Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know, what did you think down in the comments? Be sure to check out my YouTube shorts for funny board game content each and every day. I'm Drew, this is Welcome to Boredom, and I'll see you in the next video. And remember, don't read your rule books.